sorry about that. Hey, hello and welcome to Topic Tuesday, sort of. It's... I don't know. It's sort of Topic Tuesday, but not Topic Tuesday. Uh, yeah, um, this is about the new Doctor Who. Um, this is slightly different to what I normally do, but... Yeah, so we, we have the news of who the new Doctor Who is. Um, I don't know how long this will be, so I have squash. <laughs> um, so we have the news who the new Doctor Who is, Jodie Whittaker. I know this is going to be a while afterwards, but every time the new Doctor is announced, I happen to be on holiday. Um, and the previous Topic Tuesday was out while I was on holiday anyway, so... <laughs> Um, you may see, like, a camera in the corner. That That is me, yes. Um, and it's probably lagging quite a bit. I don't know why. <laughs> um, so yeah, we have Jodie Whittaker as the new Doctor. Um, I, I... I'm not sure how to feel about this. Um, at first it was like, so what? Um, but... Yeah... <laughs> It's a, there's been time between when it was announced and now, so lots of people have said their reaction to it. Um, there was rumours before that it was going to be a female doctor, possibly. Uh, Ethan predicted it wrong. Um, I, I'll say that now. Um, <laughs> uh, he said it was likely to be a comedian. He was wrong. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> before, like, the Doctor was announced, there was always rumours, of course, but it was like, um, my, my opinion on it was, as long as it was someone good, and I have no idea how good she is as an actor, since I haven't watched Broadchurch, um, I have watched um, some of the stuff she has been in, though, so, I don't recall seeing her. <laughs> Actually, no, I haven't. <laughs> I, I started watching St. Trinian's, but that's about it. Um, I haven't watched Broadchurch. I don't think I've watched Venus. Um, yeah, there's also a new writer, which I actually knew. Um, I looked at their work. <laughs> and they have worked on Doctor Who before on some fairly decent episodes, I must admit. Um, uh, so, yeah, at least this is fine. <laughs> it's kind of weird, and I don't know. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. So, that's the new Doctor. Um, Jodie Whitchurch. Yeah, not Whitchurch, Whitaker. Uh, I said Jodie Whitchurch before. It's like, why have I got the wrong person? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, there's 13 questions for the new Doctor. 13 questions for the 13th Doctor. Hmm. I think they changed that. Um, like the title of it. Um. Yeah. I've looked through these questions before, so. Um. Let's see. Uh, what does it feel like to be the 30th Doctor? Very nerve wracking, it's been so secret. Yeah. I guess. Um. Uh, why did you want to be the role? Uh, to be asked to play the ultimate character. What do you mean the ultimate character? <laughs> Um, to get play Bray Trent in the truest forms, that's why I wanted to be an actor in the first place, nice. Uh, to be able to play someone who's literally reinvented on screen with all the, yeah, I guess. And added to that to be the first woman in the role. Me, yeah, I guess. Although, technically speaking, she isn't the first woman in the role. Although it's not in canon, um, there has been a woman in the role of the Doctor before. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. But you're not the first woman to be the doctor. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, has it been hard to keep the secret? Uh, yeah. I mean, you told a lot of lies. I, I don't know. Uh, still. <laughs> um. Huh. Okay. Who was the first person you told? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Did you have a nickname? In my home, it was with an agent. It was Clooney. To me, the husband George is an iconic guy. I thought, what a real famous iconic name. <laughs> huh, I guess. 
How would it feel to be the first woman doctor? Not technically speaking, but sure. <laughs> first woman doctor in canon. Maybe in a better question. It feels completely overwhelming as a feminist, as a woman, as an actor, as a, as a human. <laughs> as someone who wants to continue to push themselves and challenge themselves. I'm not to be boxed in by what you were told you can and can't be. It feels incredible. Yeah. Still not the first woman doctor. Um, yeah. Uh, what do you want to tell the fans? I want the fans not to be scared by my gender. Why would someone be scared by your gender? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but the people who joke around saying their gender is an Apache helicopter scare me more than women. Because <laughs> uh, it's a really exciting time, and Doctor Who represents everything that's exciting about change. Fans have lived through so many changes, and this is only a new, different one, not a fearful. Um, what sort of changes? Um, what are you most excited about? I'm most excited about becoming part of family I didn't even know existed. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of people knew it existed before, yeah. <laughs> I was born in 1982, it's been around long for me, it's a family I'd never dreamed I'd be a part of. How did you know it didn't even exist if you could have ever dreamed you'd be a part of? Um... How did the new writer sell you the part? Uh, strange chat earlier about Broadchurch or Fort. Um, new job in Wales. Nice. Uh, it was an incredible chat because I asked every question in the sun and I'd said I'd take a few weeks to decide where I was going to audition. He got a phone call with 24 hours. We would have gotten the call sooner, but my husband was away and there's a time. Um, why? <laughs> okay. Where were you when you were talking about this? Because if there was a time difference. Oh, there's a time difference between you and your husband. Okay. That makes sense. Um, did he persuade you? No. Uh, though that conversation did seem to say otherwise. <laughs> um, no persuasion part with her. Yeah some phenomenal actors who threw their hats in the ring. Uh, one of the actors is actually supposedly to be the companion, so... What are you going to wear? I don't know yet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the uh, costume that she was wearing during the announcement thing was the... and um, what P yeah, Peter Capaldi currently wears, so... I don't know. <laughs> uh, is that costume you've the field? Obviously not. All the doctors have different outfits. Uh, have any of the doctors given you advice? Well, they can't. Uh, they haven't had yet. Uh, Mates companion, after Bill, also known as Rory Williams. Uh, uh, through the doctors, Matt Smith, Christopher Exon, and David Tennant. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that if D David Bradley, if I'm right, is the person playing uh, the first doctor in <laughs> okay okay every now and again something will come up like that I don't know why but because of like my odd internet connection it will just keep popping on and up Yeah. I don't care about Russia's secret di diplomatic American compass. <laughs> Fair enough. We will close this. <laughs> I have an have a newspaper a uh, news article on the other screen, so oh, it's not. There we go, the Jody Whittaker uh, Wikipedia page if you want to read that. Uh, it actually loads. Alright, uh, former Doctor Who favourite it is being tipped to play the Doctor's assistant on the reveal of Jody Whittaker as the Time Lord. An insider told The Sun, Chris is uh, The Sun? This is Mail Online. <laughs> 
Prince is a big fan of the show, and the Beast are a big fan of his. As a fan awaiting the announcement following the groundbreaking reveal of the first ever female Doctor earlier in the week. Uh, this was the 19th of July, so it was yesterday. Oh. Um, a 14 four year old Death in Paradise star. He's a pretty good actor, so hopefully he stays on for a while. <laughs> uh, so, well, okay. there was talk about Missy in the companion, but they kind of killed her off. <laughs> so, yeah, it should be interesting. Um, talk long circulated about Chris scooping the roles of the Doctor, we saw us previously revealing uh, Chris Marshall has already joined the cast and regenerated at the end of the series. Not in the Christmas special. Wait, what? Oh, okay, that makes sense. But though the Christmas special is taking speak in the end of the series, so... <laughs> uh, top misleading claims regarding his recruitment inside it's totally dismissed the idea of a woman scooping the role. Just two months before Jodie's announcement. Uh, they wouldn't risk a woman doctor. They wanted David Tennant type. Yeah, I guess he kind of is. Um, news of Chris's possible casting came from just after, di uh, just days after uh, Jody was confirmed as the first female Time Lord. I'm sorry, but what about Missy? And, like, whoever that other person was, um, the, the Doctor shot. <laughs> uh, after the Wimbledon men's single finals. Oh. I was watching the women's. Uh, ah, that may explain a lot. <laughs> so yeah, there's a video. There was a video with that, so that that's different. No, it turns out there's something like that. <laughs> you can't see it, so that doesn't really help. <laughs> uh, as um. This is kind of weird. It, for, from what I can tell, this is mainly talking to Jodie Whittaker about the role. It's like, what about Chris? <laughs> Not Chris, um, the new writer Chris. The you know, Chris. Alright, uh, back to um. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, back to the Wikipedia page. Uh. English actor, prominent uh, Venus. Uh, never seen any of those. Um, hmm. Let's see. Oh, uh, what has she been in that I may have not heard of? Let's move the webcam over a bit. Uh, Venus, Flying by the Sun, Broadchurch, no, nothing else. Uh, on. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how to feel about all this. It's, it seems to be. Uh, I don't know. It's like, I'm not sure if there was a reason behind choosing Jodie Whittaker. <coughs> like for diversity reasons, I doubt it. But somehow, considering the her answers to. Uh, how does it feel to be the first female doctor, which is apparently speaking true, but, you know, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, come on, Wikipedia, <laughs> oh, I like the fact that it's a simple English <laughs> version of this, it's nice to know, uh, here we go, yeah, sure, St. Trinians, uh, let's see, uh, St. Trinians, yeah, I don't think those are the same St. Trinians that I'm thinking of. Um, yeah, I haven't seen any of the work. From what I can tell. Uh, get something 
maybe. I don't know. There's like a lot of Christmas ones now. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's about it. on television. Mm, this film's on television, so. Maybe she's been on a TV program that I've watched. <laughs> I don't watch many TV programs, though, so. Huh. Um, let's, uh, let's go to what Chris Chibble has worked on. Um, he's the new writer, sort of, since. As you can see, he has worked on some work before, some of episodes before. Uh, 42, which was with David Tennant, um, the one where they were trapped on the spaceship, um, with, uh, Martha Jones, I believe it was, um, it was either Martha Jones or Donna, I want to say it was Martha, um, Hungry Earth's Cold Blood, yeah, those were pretty good episodes, I, I've, uh, I've watched them again, they seemed kind of slow, but kind of an interesting story behind it, <laughs> Uh, dinosaurs on a spaceship. Yeah, I guess. That was a pretty good episode. Um, Power of Three. That was an episode. <laughs> I, uh, I really can't remember much in terms of Power of Three. It may have been a mini-sode. Um, since Pond Life was a mini-sode, presumably PS is a, was a mini-sode since I don't recall there being a Doctor Who episode. Power of three. No idea. Um, yeah, he's worked on Broadchurch, Great Train Robbery, which I found that is actually something, but I doubt it. Uh, Torchwood, which I haven't actually watched. <laughs> I keep meaning to, but I haven't watched it yet. Uh, Life on Mars. Series 1, Episode 7. <laughs> I've I've started to watch Life on Mars. I managed to get to like episode two because there wasn't any more. That's about it from him. Um, his work, television writer for Doctor Who, longtime fan of Doctor Who. Um, huh. Oh, okay. That would explain why I've never heard of PS. <laughs> it's a storyboard format. Um. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, I'll go back to the introducing Freddy Bit Taker as the Doctor. The uh, Thirteenth Doctor. Um, show the video. <laughs> if it actually loads, it won't. I'm over. <laughs> might eventually, but still, uh, so yeah, that's about it, I'm not exactly sure how to feel about this, I'm not sure if it's like, pushing, like, diversity, which I oddly doubt, um, because there's a article somewhere, uh, let's see, uh, about how it isn't diverse enough, it's like, I'm sorry, but how can it not diverse enough. <laughs> we, we've had plenty of diverse characters, we, although it's questionable some things, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> uh, because we've had, um, oof. we started off with pretty much an all-white cast, of course, but, uh, yeah, I doubt I'm going to Okay, brought up but soon, so. Um, since I don't actually remember what the pause button was on this recording. Um. Hmm, never mind. Uh, I doubt I'm gonna get it up, so. Uh, so. So the newspaper article was from Anissa Sarkeesian. Um. About what her comments were on it. But what I find odd about it was, uh, oh, there we go, here's Google. <laughs> Thank you, Google, it took you long enough. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to talk while typing, which isn't actually one of my strong suits. 
Flavor is about it, but yeah, I don't usually look up much when it comes to. Of course, not now. Not when it comes to. Um. Yes, I know that's spelled incorrectly. That was too easy. Um. I should have brought this up before, but it's like, I didn't really see much reason for it. <laughs> uh, don't know if critic, critic complains, new Doctor Who is not diverse enough, here we go. <laughs> and before that, the garbage human, no. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> you can't really call yourself a victim if you <laughs> attack someone unprovoked. Um, yeah, they're not diverse enough, because what, what she wants is kind of odd, because now she's got a female doctor, she's a feminist critic, I'm pretty sure having a female doctor would be good enough, even though she is actually the first female doctor. Um, if you don't believe me, watch the comic relief special, um, for, with, had Roman Atkinson in it as the doctor and then yeah <laughs> a lot of people as the doctor um uh yeah <laughs> um yeah come on watch it times i don't read you even because i live in wales so yeah come on hmm. i don't know <laughs> uh um, so yeah, what do you, I, I have to question what you mean by not diverse enough, because we've had people of color, um, we, we've had blue people, we, we've even had what the world will be like after social justice has gotten its way, um, And I am sure that uh, uh, Black Lives Matter was still around then, because the blue person was complaining about why uh, the bill was so taken back. Uh, by the colour of um, his skin. <sighs> huh. Yeah, Chris isn't a good idea when I'm recording. <laughs> Just crunching. Um, so yeah, because in terms of companions, we've had uh, Captain Jack Hartnett, a bisexual um, immortal being who is kind of who he actually doesn't care about who um, he flirts with. <laughs> um, then we've had Martha, who actually I want to say she was uh, middle class um, since she worked as a doctor. Oh, wait, that that would, because technically speaking, that would mean she was an other female doctor. <laughs> Not in the literal sense, but technically speaking, she was also a doctor. <laughs> um, yeah, I want to say she was middle class. Because um, a working class doctor would be <laughs> kind of confusing. <laughs> but a working class companion, that was Donna, as well as Rose Tyler. Um, See, recently we've had a person of colour lesbian. Um, see, the previous companion we had, uh, yeah, that's just <laughs> there's nothing really about Clara. <laughs> well, there were multiple versions of her. I'm sure one of them 
was transgender, lesbian, bi, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, the new the, the article doesn't come out. <laughs> Most of my points make no sense. Yeah. A lot of change to the Doctor probably won't please a lot of fans. Here we go. Um, still not diverse enough. Uh, Alright. It needs to be said that Doctor Who is still an overwhelmingly white show and that issues of representation do not exist in the isolation from each other. Tweeted Nadie Sarkeesian, a Canadian American feminist of Armenian heritage known for her activism at comic book conventions. Uh, it's not as if you fix the woman problem. What do you mean the woman problem? All the companions have been female. Well, except Captain Jack, but he was an exception. Kind of got kicked out the show quite quickly. <laughs> um, then fix the race problem. Since technically speaking, a lot of the companions recently have kind of been people of color. Then the queer slash trans. How? <laughs> it all has to happen in tandem. I'm pretty sure that's what kind of just happened when it came to Bill. <laughs> she did seem to be kind of. When she was first put forward as the doc. The companion to the doctor, I thought she was a lot like Donna. Uh, she was actually different from Donna. But I'm pretty sure that goes through most of those problems. Anita Sarkeesian was a video game critic who did a Kickstarter for tropes and women in video games, which <laughs> uh, like, I don't know how to approach people. I've I, I, I one which was meant to be a topic Tuesday, but it kind of didn't come around. Uh, between these as separate issues, work to create a vision of progress that perpetrates the very imbalances we're struggling against. Uh, what do you mean the woman problem? Uh, I'm back to that, because. You're talking from what you would probably call a position of privilege. Um, we need to acknowledge the ways these issues are inextricably linked if we're going to move forward towards a more equitable world for everyone. What do you mean, equitable? Because... I don't know. Uh, well, how your household name is Sarkeesian was named one of Time's 100 most influential people in the world in 2015. Um, according to a profile on her... So technically speaking, she could have lied about these. I, I oddly doubt it, but... <laughs> uh, Anita is a feminist of the digital age, using modern tools and platforms to engage thousands of people who want to hear her thoughts and respond to the challenges she raises. Although probably not in the way she wants. Um. Um. <laughs> Will Wheaton, probably one of. Will Wheaton was the one in. Will Wheaton. Oh yeah, Star Trek Generation, the most annoying. <laughs> I am pretty sure a lot of people didn't like him as an actor. I'm not sure, but <laughs> I, I haven't watched Star Trek. Yeah. And of course, the web pages have responded. Will Wheaton. <laughs> uh, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Um, yeah, that's about it. So we have a female doctor, which I'm not too sure about. Um, why she's in? If it's because of her talent, which, considering she's not actually in a, one of the primary roles in Broadchurch, I. Not sure if. <laughs> um, yeah. That's about it. Uh, I probably will put more points in the description if I can think of any links to all of these, of course. 
Uh, so yeah, I guess I'll see you next time. Uh, if you like this video, like, subscribe, comment. If you like this video, comment saying why you like this video. Uh, if it's because you're someone like Anita Sarkeesian who doesn't like criticism, I suggest just hitting the dislike button. I, I leave most of these things open. Um, yeah. I guess I'll see you all next time. Uh, yeah. uh, Goodbye.